I have a sketch here. There's a blue orb over here, and I'm gonna call it Orb Three. And then there's a spaceship that's zooming away from the orb, and what the spaceship doesn't know is that another smaller spaceship just escaped from its um, hatch, I guess, and is zooming away from it really, really fast. Some significant fraction of the speed of light. I'm gonna have to emphasize these guys. I had to do a little bit of whiteout. Made some mistakes setting this guy up. This is spaceship two, this is spaceship one, and this is the blue orb. So you know that velocities are relative. So if this guy is going half the speed of light away from the orb, and this guy is going 90% the speed of light away from the spaceship, all of those are possible and consistent. But the greatest fear comes, what if the orb looks at that guy? You see what I did? I said 50% the speed of light, this guy's relative to that guy, and 90% the speed of light, this guy's relative to that guy. It would seem, if we were doing standard velocity addition, <clears throat> that the 50% uh, the, the speed of light and the 90% the speed of light would add up to be 1.4 times the speed of light, which is a complete violation of everything that Einstein and, by extension, you and I hold dear. So we can't have this spaceship going 1.4 times the speed of light as seen by the orb. So we set up this cool equation right here, and we don't make any sense of it at all because it's got a whole bunch of subscripts and squares and stuff. But we're gonna try to make some sense of it. The first going to define V1. So V1 is seen by the orb, so I'm gonna draw it in blue. V1 is the speed of ship one as seen by orb. This is very important, I'll put it in capitals. I'm gonna call it orb three, okay? So orb three is sitting here looking at ship one. Ship one just left and it's going at some speed away from it. Now V1 could be negative if it's going the other direction and we can allow all of those things to happen. We'll be a little bit, um, we'll be a little bit high level here and we'll do an example after this. And then, <clears throat> see the cool thing is, <laughs> I like that I've set this up where this guy is really small because orb three can't really see ship two. So I'm gonna say that ship one is the only guy who can see ship two right now. And ship one says, well, ship one says, I see ship two going at a speed which we'll call V2. This is the speed of ship two as seen by, who's seeing it is incredibly important in relativity, as seen by ship one. All right, and I expect that you'll refer back to this sketch. I know that I'm going to do that every time I get a problem uh, set up. It's the speed of ship two as seen by ship one. Now, I'm going to go over here and consider, again, something that the orb would see. So I'm gonna cross this out and say this is a blue velocity because V, this V with no subscripts, is the velocity, it's the speed of ship, you wanna guess what I'm setting up here? Of course, it's going to be the speed of ship two as seen by the orb. Ship two as seen by orb three. Okay, so the orb is sort of the stationary guy in this problem, and we see this guy zooming away from it and this guy zooming away from it even faster. So let's really quickly well, I'll stop this video, and if you want to watch the next video, you can see how these velocities work out. We said 50% and then 90% the speed of light. So we'll see that it is safely kept below the speed of light, the velocity of the ship two as seen by ship three, because we cannot have anything going faster than the speed of light as it is the ultimate speed in the universe. And this follows simply from saying that if you're in a box, you can't tell whether you're moving or not. All of this follows from the statement that if you're in a box, you can't tell if you're moving or not. Wow.